It's not about the notes. A record can play the notes. It's about giving and taking and listening and watching and learning. That's music, the most human of expressions. But does music truly belong only to human musicians? Join us as two researchers describe how mechatronics, artificial intelligence, and human musicians combine for a new kind of creation in a survey of robotic musicianship. The Georgia Institute of Technology is famous for its engineering programs. Less well known is its School of Music. This is where PhD student Mason Breton works with Professor Gil Weinberg to build and teach robots about musicianship. So we have all these two separate things which focus on uh, the intelligence and then the actual physical actuators that generate the sound. And then these two things combined is the study of robotic musicianship. The history of musical robots goes back over 2,000 years. If you go back to Archimedes, there, there are efforts of actually trying to have an automaton that uh, plays music. Uh, they used back then, they didn't have computers, so they used pneumatic and hydraulic. But all of these efforts since Archimedes' time, maybe even before that we don't know about, uh, were basically following rules. And I think that's really the, the the key difference between some of these previous musical robots and robotic musicians is that uh, there's this underlying musical intelligence uh, that allows it to uh, make inform musical decisions and actually respond in real time uh, to interacting musicians. A catchy phrase which, which I kind of try to capture what we are doing in with, which is listening like a human and improvise like a machine. To encourage interaction, Breton and Weinberg's own robots are anthropomorphic, tapping their feet and bobbing their heads, just like their human counterparts. We took one step further in the whole idea of embodiment and tried to have an automated and animated uh, embodiment that will, that, that will enhance the, the music um, performance from a musical point of view, but also from engaging and, and enjoyment point of view. But while they're anthropomorphic, such robots aren't necessarily humanoid. That fact fundamentally affects their musical decisions. So you have this joint optimization between uh, its body and then what it knows about music. And so each musical decision is informed not only by what it knows about the music, but also about just Shimon's design. If we had Shim designed Shimon with a different set of physical constraints, maybe 10 arms instead of the eight that it currently has, uh, the output would be different. And if it only had one, again, it would be different. Breton and Weinberg believe this field of study could advance areas beyond musical creativity. Because there's a lot of challenges within robotic musicianship um, that, that touch on like timing and expression, social, social interaction, uh, the mechanical dexterity, uh, all of these different different things um, apply to robotics in general. People understand improvisation to be something important for general understanding of human intelligence. Find out more in the review article, A Survey of Robotic Musicianship, in the May 2016 issue of Communications of the ACM.